Okay, as promised, here's the latest Dragon OS Focal build. I'm just going to go through a quick installation. I'll highlight a few differences. Uh, whatever you have used to create the uh, installation media, you, I've seen, put a video out there in the past of how to create the live persistent USB stick. You're more than welcome to do that. Uh, you can use Etcher to burn the ISO to USB. Uh, you can burn the ISO to DVD. Uh, in this case, I'm using a virtual machine uh, just to make it a, a little easier in recording. But once you've got that uh, USB stick or DVD or whatever set up, you boot it up on a laptop, desktop, whatever you've got, uh, x86, 64 bit. Uh, you'd come in here, whether it's UEFI or Legacy, you should be fine. Get to the desktop, we'll run the, install, uh, the installer. We'll pull it up. run through, hit and continue, continue. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to leave both unchecked, speeds it up. Uh, just note that you should be fine with third-party software, should be fine with updates. About the only scenario I could think of off the top of my head is if there was a drastic change in a GNU radio update that might mess something up, so just take that into consideration. You could always come back and uh, run it without updates and then manually um, go as needed but I've not had an issue yet it's just that focal is still so new uh, no telling when uh, the new radio might be have a big change to it so anyways I'll hit continue and we'll pick up the installer here in a second all right I'm gonna erase the disk and install Dragon OS. If you have another OS on the hard drive already, you might see the options of installing it alongside. But in this case, I'm just gonna erase the whole disk and install. If you wanted to do, uh, if you wanted to encrypt the disk, you could do advanced features uh, and use LVM uh, and then encrypt the actual disk. At which point. Make sure you don't forget the key to unlock the hard drive because that will be requested the next time you reboot. I'm just going to leave uh, encryption off. Click install now. Continue. Pick your time zone. Create your username, password. All right, so while that's installing in the background, I'll show some new software that's included. I don't have any SDRs plugged in right now, but uh, one thing that seems to be pretty popular is SDR trunk. Uh, in this case, I've updated, it's a pretty big change, SDR trunk version 0 .0. Uh, I'll show, uh, I'll show that, but first you got two options. If you want to run this thing completely offline, there is a JMBE included in the user source directory. And you can do, let's see, you can build with the JMBE that's included in there because the uh, tools that are needed are already uh, in place. So you can, you can either do this. Note where the JMBE is at, right there, so that when you start SDR trunk from the little shortcut I've created here, you're still more than more than welcome to run it using the actual where it's linked to right here, so you could kind of see what's going on in the background. But something that's uh, different here, uh, you can do, you can either reference that JMBE that you, uh, that you just created, or they got a new feature here. If you have uh, an internet connection, you can actually create the library on the fly here 
and then that will be referenced and that's important because that will get you your P25 uh, phase one and two uh, decoders and uh, but something that's different here you'll notice uh, the channels and stuff the options right here is gone it's actually really easy now if you go to play to playlist editor you click on uh, channels you can add right here like a for example say you got a p25 phase one that you want to listen in on you click here at least give it uh, a name you would come down here you'd pick the uh, control frequency you could add that control frequency let's see you would pick your tuner which in this case I don't have one plugged in you'd come down and you would be able to select the uh, modulation type and you can set any other settings in there you'd save add it up here click play there you go you now have uh, streaming radio references that you can put your username in and pull down information from the internet so uh, it's actually really easy to get up and run and I just tried out a uh, P25 phase one uh, system in the local area here and had this run in, in a matter of minutes so that's in there now okay let's see you can of course find everything that uh, I've been putting in here in the user source to try and save some space I've uh, compress some things but the source is still here uh, we've added let's see SDR angel from source you can find that under internet it's got the SDR play support now uh, pulls in a soapy SDR capability so that will add more equipment to also allow my uh, SB25 or B205 mini dash I to work let's see we've got reference in the readme here that I make sure to include but uh, if you want to use the soapy remote server you can either start it via the command line or you can run You can start the SOAPY remote service like this, uh, but right now it's disabled by default. Let's see, what else? You have everything you need to uh, create a GSM network, an LTE network, I've added back in the airband, and let's see, dump VDL2, the Tetra kit has been updated and so a lot of new a lot of new features um, yeah so. all right the installation has finished I'll show you the other important part of this you go ahead restart Take your installation media out. All right, the first time you go to log in, you're going to get a box in the upper right hand corner that's asking you to agree to the SDR Play API library. I just had to have this installed via a script so that it just wasn't already in here. Go ahead and enter, read the agreement, hit Q to continue. It's going to ask you, yes, do you want to run the um, installation or not yeah I want to go ahead and run it put your password in puts everything in place 
Uh, yep, I want to put the USB IDs in place. There you go. Now you have SDR play support out of the box. If you didn't do that and you wanted to add it later on your own, go into the user source. You see uh, it's sitting there, the run file, and you would do essentially the same thing here. Um, everything else is already taken care of. Your new user is added to both the USRP and the Kismet group. Takes care of, uh, of that. And so everything else uh, should be taken care of. Just a couple things to note. If for some reason you uh, do not, I've had this happen a couple times, you do not have your source uh, APT or source directory list here. Uh, the only thing I can say is that something may have happened during installation because it zips up uh, the uh, things that I had in place and for some reason or another may not have put them put them back. So the only thing I could suggest there is do the installation over again. Uh, I'll continue to look at that and figure out some other options. Maybe I just uh, zip up the source sources uh, and put it in here where you could manually put it back. But other than that, everything should be ready. You should find that now when you start your uh, anything that has SDR play support next to it, you'll find your equipment there. And yeah. All right. Thanks.